These are my seven favorite potato recipes. The first favorite recipe is potato hash. Some of you might call it home fries. What it isn't is hash browns. That is a different recipe and is coming up soon. Potato hash or home fries is literally chopped and fried potatoes. I start by attempting to cut my potatoes into cubes. I like to cut off the edges so that the potato can sit flat on my board. I'm using russet potatoes for this dish. I'd like to use a sweet pepper and an onion in my potato hash. I'm dicing the pepper and the onion first. And we're ready to cook. I've made home fries lots of different ways. While I love to roast them, another method is cooking them on the stove with water. So I've added water to my pan with the potatoes, a bit of salt, and a lid. These will cook until they are fork tender about 10 to 12 minutes. Once they are fork tender, pour out any remaining water. I add butter and neutral oil to the pan and then the vegetables and saute until the potatoes begin to brown and the onion and peppers have softened. All of the seasonings go in. Continue to cook until the potatoes have achieved a golden brown color. I like to add a bunch of toppings to my potato hash. These are so delicious. I'm now making a basic baked potato. They've been washed and dried. I'm stabbing each potato a lot of times. This will allow the potatoes to vent while they cook, preventing a possible disaster of exploding potatoes. And releasing the steam will allow the potatoes to become more fluffy inside. When I bake potatoes, I like to use russet potatoes, also called Idaho potatoes. Russets are perfect for baking because the skin gets crispy and the inside becomes dreamily fluffy. I added some neutral oil. Here I'm using avocado oil. It has a high smoke point, which makes it great for oven cooking and sprinkling on some salt. I just give each of them a quick rub to make sure they are covered and into the oven they go. They cook on a silicone baking mat just because it makes cleanup easier. You could use parchment paper or just place them on a baking sheet. I cook these for an hour at 400 degrees. Once they come out, I like to give them a little squeeze. If they are squishy, then I know they are cooked. You could also poke them with a fork. If the fork goes in very easily, then they are cooked. One way we eat baked potatoes is stuffed. We probably eat stuffed baked potatoes at least once a week. After I cut them open, I like to add olive oil. Lots of people enjoy butter. Then I add salt and pepper directly to the potato flesh. I'm topping with sour cream, steamed broccoli, and a bit of cheese. Yum. The next way I prepare baked potatoes is by making potato skins. You know, it doesn't have to be the Super Bowl or New Year's Eve to make potato skins. My family really likes them and they get so happy when I make them. They're just fun to eat. 
We start with the baked potatoes. Allow them to cool until you can handle them or use a kitchen towel to hold them so you don't burn yourself. I like to choose the long, thin potatoes if there are any. Then I cut them lengthwise so that they resemble little boats. Then the flesh gets removed. You want to keep at least one half inch of flesh on the skin so that the boat doesn't break apart. Now we want to crisp up our little potato boats. I brush the inside with a bit of neutral oil and add a bit of salt and they go into the oven to crisp up. I just cook them for 10 minutes at 425. Now I add about two tablespoons of cheese per boat and top with some vegan bacon. I'm using tempe bacon, which I've already crisped up. and back into the oven until the cheese melts, just three to five minutes. When they come out for the final time, I add sour cream and some green onions, so yummy. This next recipe is hash browns, obviously not to be confused with potato hash, which we've already cooked. For this recipe, I use a store-bought shredded potato from the freezer section. I like this brand because it's just potatoes. You could absolutely hand shred potatoes if you like, but that's just a no for me. It doesn't save much money and it is very time consuming. I like to use a nonstick pan for this recipe. Once it gets hot, I add about two tablespoons of neutral oil and then the potatoes go in. I press the potatoes into the pan and then add seasonings. This then cooks undisturbed for some time. I cooked mine for 18 minutes on medium heat. Then I flipped it and cooked for additional six minutes on the other side. You can cook until you achieve the color or crunch that you desire. Mine is a medium cook and a medium crunch, but you could definitely cook them longer if you like them crispier. Afterwards, slide them onto a plate and top with whatever you like. The next favorite dish is potato salad. Lots of people only serve this during their summer barbecue, but potato salad is great throughout the year. You could just make this on a random Thursday and your family would be so happy. I know mine always is. I start by cutting my Yukon Gold potatoes into quarters. I chose Yukon Gold because they are creamy and work really well in a potato salad. And then they go into a pot with salted water and boil until they are fork tender. While those cook, I'm making the dressing. This is probably the most important part of the dish. There are many different types of potato salad dressings. My favorite is a bit acidic, a bit sweet, and very creamy and flavorful. When the potatoes are cooked, give them a really good drain. Then I add parsley, chopped celery, and finely sliced sweet onions.
and the dressing goes in while the potatoes are hot. This will allow them to absorb some of the delicious dressing flavors. I am literally getting so hungry writing this voiceover right now. <laughs> to top with more fresh parsley and some sweet paprika. Yummy. The next dish is smashed potatoes, which I like to eat as nachos. This is a great way to use up your smaller potatoes. After being cleaned, they go right into the water. If you have larger ones, just cut them in half. If the potatoes are similar sizes, then they will all cook at about the same time. Once they are fork tender, they come out of the water. Drain them really well. I highly recommend placing them onto a silicone baking sheet or parchment paper because they can be a bit messy. And then they get smashed. I'm using a mason jar, but you can use anything that you like, like a coffee cup. Since we want them to get very crispy, I'm brushing on some neutral oil, although it isn't required. And then I'm just adding seasonings that I like. They do cook for quite a long time in order to achieve the crispy potato. You could easily use an air fryer, which would obviously take less time. And into the oven. Once they come out, add whichever toppings that you like. I really like to eat them as nachos with some cheese, sour cream, and salsa. This is another family favorite, cheesy potato casserole. I guess a lot of people call them funeral potatoes. Is there really food that people only eat at funerals? Either way, these are really good, and I don't think we should have to have a sad family event in order to eat them. Just saying. Also, this dish is super easy to put together. I start by chopping my veggies. I like to use a sweet onion and pepper in this dish. Spinach is totally optional, but it's an easy way to add additional nutrients and the spinach cooks down to almost nothing so it's hard to know that it's even in there. And I throw in a bag of frozen shredded potatoes. These are pretty cheap and save a lot of time from shredding potatoes by hand. These are the same potatoes that I used for the hash browns. This sauce is so delicious and will make the potatoes flavorful and cheesy. Even people who eat actual dairy love this dish.
Everything gets mixed together and thrown into a casserole dish. When it comes out of the oven, it's creamy, cheesy, and delicious. For an easy dessert after you've eaten your potatoes, watch this.